Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over the best mods for each weapon in Doom Eternal. Weapon mods are some of the most crucial upgrades that you can get in Doom Eternal and they make a huge difference, especially when you're trying to get hits on an enemy's weak spots to try and take out their guns or armor. This makes getting the right mods much more important than in the 2016 release since any mods that help you deal with a specific type of enemy or a specific type of weak spot are inherently better than those that don't. For the sake of completion and understanding, I won't be just listing the best mods but also provide a brief discussion and comparison on why one is better than the other one. And as always, before I get started, if you enjoy the video, please check out the other videos in the channel and if you find yourself wanting more, please hit that subscribe button. I will be covering more of Doom Eternal in the next few videos, so make sure to stay tuned. Okay, let's start off with the combat shotgun. This is the first gun you get in the game and it has one of the best attachments that you can get. Which is not only pretty mandatory you get at the start, but it will continue to prove itself useful throughout the entire game. I'm talking of course of the sticky bombs. Sticky bombs are great for clearing out groups of enemies and dealing decent damage to heavy units, but more importantly, they are extremely effective at taking enemy weapons out such as the Arachnotron's turret or the cannons on either arm of the Mancubus. It is surprisingly easy to hit these targets using the sticky bomb even while moving and since you can also use your combat shotgun to weaken enemies for a glory kill and get some health back, the sticky bomb mod will turn the combat shotgun into one if not the most versatile weapons in the entire game. As for the upgrades, get the increased explosion size first and the other one afterwards. The full auto mod, which is the alternative, provides you with a way to deal considerable amounts of damage, provided you can land the shots from up close. Your movement speed is reduced while firing in this mode, which is pretty much the opposite of what you want from basically every combat encounter in the game. In fact, a good way to know which mod to choose for every weapon is just pick the one that doesn't reduce your movement speed and takes the least amount of time to charge up. The full auto mod can be useful, but it shouldn't be a priority, especially early on. Next up, we have the heavy cannon, which is your basic assault rifle. I play through Doom 2016 using the micro missiles a lot, but they are much less effective this time around. So this might sound crazy, but the upgrade to get is the precision bolt. Unlike the previous game where this mod only added a scope, this will charge up a shot which will instantly take out any weapon an enemy has. Combined with the rune that slows time when you're in the air, all you need to do is double jump and fire. And since you can fire this from the air pretty quickly, go with the fast loader upgrade first to get more shots in and then go for the mobility one. The micro missiles seem not to target enemy weak spots even if you aim carefully at them, so using them to weaken the heavier enemies just won't work. They work really well at taking out fodder enemies just like the description says, but you generally want to keep those guys alive to refill your armor, ammo or health, so that renders them really good at something that you don't really want to do, which makes the mod not really useful. Even hitting enemies in the head with the precision bolt seems to do more damage than a volley of micro missiles for heavier enemies, so definitely let this one go until you have most of the other mods. The plasma rifle is one of the best weapons in the game. It deals great damage to all enemy types. The two mods you get are pretty different from one another. The microwave beam will stun any enemy, dealing damage very slowly until they explode, while the heat blast is an AOE attack which deals decent damage up close. As you might imagine from what I said earlier, I would suggest you go for the Heat Blast. You get to use it fairly often and it's great at dealing with demons that are highly mobile or whenever you get surrounded by enemies. Once you get it upgraded, you'll be able to use it even more often, which will further improve its utility. It won't take down heavier enemies, but it can be used to finish off several of them at once if they are fairly damaged already. The Microwave Beam is just too situational to use correctly. It can drain your ammo very fast without even killing an enemy if you don't use it on a heavily weakened enemy and it can be easily interrupted if you break line of sight. All of this heavily limits its use cases and it requires you to pay too much attention to when you can fire it, from where and at which demon. 
and the benefit isn't that great either. So stick to the heavy blast and you'll be fine. Now we get down to some not so great mod choices for some weapons. The rocket launcher is one of those. The remote detonate is again one of those mods that requires too much attention from you to be used properly and to keep line of sight until your rockets reach your intended target. The lock on burst is a much better option but you have to make sure to pick up the quick lock upgrade as soon as possible. The default lock on time is way too slow to use this mod effectively in combat and unfortunately the quick lock takes 6 weapon upgrade points to unlock making it a pretty big investment but it is definitely worth it. Once you get it you'll be able to hit large enemies that take a lot of damage with 3 rockets at once making them much easier to take out. Again, pair this mod with the time slowing rune for a great combo. The super shotgun has no mods other than the meat hook, but getting the upgrades is pretty useful. You should get fast hands for increasing your fire rate first. Once you get both, you should try using the hook pretty often to take out fodder enemies between fights to get the mastery upgrades which will set enemies on fire when hooked, which is great for getting some extra armor. The ballista is like the railgun of the game and it's great on its own. Both mods have the downside of taking a decent amount of time to charge up, but the destroyer blade time is just absurd. Even with the upgrade that decreases your charge time by 20%, it takes far too long to shoot to be effective. Maybe you can use it to deal damage before you start a big fight, but mid combat it just takes super long to charge up and leaves you very vulnerable. On the other hand, the Arbalest charge speed can be increased, but it's not as severe as the Destroyer Blade, making it the better option by far. It can also trigger enemy weak spots and it scopes in to make precise shots even easier to pull off. I wouldn't suggest you invest in the Destroyer Blade at all, actually, especially if you're playing in the harder difficulties, because even though it deals a massive amount of damage, you don't really get to use it. And lastly we have the chain gun, which once again returns with the amazing mobile turret mode. This mod makes the gun capable of dealing insane amounts of damage, but it eats through your ammunition in seconds, so make sure that you have your chainsaw ready and try and upgrade your ammo storage as much as you can, so you can get the most out of it. Both upgrades are great and make the mod much better, so get them early if you can. The energy shield upgrade, on the other hand, will stop you from taking damage for roughly 6 seconds, but it also provides time for the demons to close in on you, and at least from my experience, you get killed from melee attacks much, much faster than from anything else in the game, so yeah, providing them time to get close isn't really good. So you can pick the mod that allows you to kill bosses in a few seconds, or pick the one that allows you to stop and think for 6 seconds. I think the choice is pretty clear. As they say, the best defense is a good offense. Okay, that will be all for now, I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know down in the comments if you picked any other mods that you found useful and why you did. I'll be doing another video on the best suit upgrades and runes to which I'll link to once it's done right here as well as a tips video, so definitely check that out as well. Okay, once again, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.